Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm so glad you could join me. I'm Brother Bill, and this is Morning Prayer for Wednesday, August the 3rd, 2011. It's year one, proper 13, and week five in the psalm cycle. And the scripture for this service, Psalm 119, verse 97 to 120. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 through 13. And the song of Zechariah, Luke 1, verse 68 to 79. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, my God, how I love your law. Alleluia. Psalm 119. My God, how I love your law. It is ever in my mind. Your command makes me wiser than my foes, for it is mine forever. I have more insight than all who teach me for I ponder your will. I have more understanding than the old, for I keep your precepts. I turn my feet from evil paths to obey your word. I have not turned from your decrees. You yourself have taught me. Your promise is sweeter to my taste than honey in the mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, and so I hate false ways. Your word is a lamp for my steps and a light for my path. I have sworn and have made up my mind to obey your decrees. My God, I am deeply afflicted. By your word give me life. Accept, Most High, the homage of my lips and teach me your decrees. Though I carry my life in my hands, I remember your law. And though the wicked try to ensnare me, I do not stray from your precepts. Your will is my heritage forever, the joy of my heart. I set myself to carry out your statutes in fullness forever. I have no love for the half-hearted. My love is for your law. You are my shelter, my shield. I hope in your word. Lead me, you who do evil. I will keep God's command. If you uphold me by your promise, I shall live. Let my hopes not be in vain. Sustain me, and I shall be saved, and ever observe your statutes. You spurn all who swerve from your statutes. Their cunning is in vain. You throw away the wicked like dross, so I love your will. I tremble before you in terror. Terror, I fear your decrees. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. My God, how I love your law. Alleluia. The lesson is from the second book of Samuel, chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. David asked, Is there still anyone left in the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba, and he was summoned to David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. And the king said, Is there anyone remaining of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There remains a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in his feet. And the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, He is in the house of Machir, son of Amiel, at Lodibar. And then King David sent and brought him from the house of Machir. Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, and fell on his face and did obeisance. David said, Mephibosheth. He answered, I am your servant. And David said to him, Do not be afraid, for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land of your grandfather Saul, and you yourself shall eat at my table always. He did obeisance and said, What is your servant that you should look upon a dead dog such as I? And then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said to him, all that belong to Saul and to all his house I have given to your master's grandson. 
you and your sons and your servants shall till the land for him and shall bring in the produce so that your master's grandson may have food to eat. But your master's grandson, Mephibosheth, shall always eat at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. And then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king commands his servant, so your servant will do. Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Meshibapheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all who lived in Ziba's house became Mephibosheth's servants. And Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he always ate at the king's table. Now he was lame in both feet. Here ends the lesson. Now let us offer our prayers and petitions for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and found without fault on the day of your coming. For Joe and Tom and Alan, and for all of our church leaders, for all the holy people of God, for all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel for peace in Jerusalem and in all the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. For those in positions of public trust, especially Barak, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. For a blessing upon all human labor, for the right uses of the riches of creation, for the unemployed, especially for robbers. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, especially Stephen Michael and Melody. For those recovering from surgery, especially Donald. For the aged and the infirm, especially Ronald Francis and Marjorie. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you. For all who commended themselves to our prayers, our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. For all who've died in the communion of your church, and all those whose faith is known to you alone, that with St. Francis and St. Clare and all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. For the mercy of God community, Joseph Gerald, Thomas Bonaventure, Donna Allen, Ronald Francis, James Bernard, Peter Christopher, Stephen Luke, William John, Don Colombo, Max Bartholomew, Todd Dunstan, Brian Daniel, Raymond Patrick, Richard Robert, Stephen Michael, William Irwin, and all the Mercy of God associates. That God who's begun this ministry may bring it to fulfillment for all of your intentions. Our beloved in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive others. Save us from the time of trial, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Blessed are you, O God of Israel. Alleluia. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed are you, O God of Israel, for you've come to your people and set us free. You've raised for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old that you would show us mercy. You would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. You promised to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to Abraham and Sarah, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight all the days of our lives. And you, my child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before our God to prepare the way, to give the people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, 
to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, O God of Israel. Alleluia. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.